Hi everyone, this is PV202 System Design Sizing PV Source and Inverter Output Circuits. For this exercise, you'll need the SMA Sunny Boy datasheet, the Solar World SW290 datasheet, your 2017 code book, or for the folks that were in class, I gave handouts for specific tables in the 2017 code. Table 31015B16, page 150. Table 31015B3A, pipe fill corrections, page 148. Table 31015B2A, temperature corrections, page 147. Table 240.6A, standard fuse breaker ratings, page 95. And you won't need the chapter 9, table 8, conductor properties. All right. So sizing out the conductors for and overcurrent protection for the PV source circuits, there's five steps to that. And this is laid out within the code starting in section 690.8b and then there will be a couple other code references. But this is a sequence of calculations that you're going to make to size out the conductor size and the overcurrent protection size for source circuits. PV output circuits, and we'll define what those are in just a second. So anyway, step one, you're going to calculate max current. We have have not we have not done that yet. You'll take the short circuit current, which I collect off the electrical characteristics off the back of the data sheet for a module. So I take short circuit current times 1.25 to get I max. And that's laid out within Article 690.8b. Next calculation, I'm going to do uh, calculate for continuous use. <clears throat> we'll learn more about that in a second. Then my third step, I'm going to do two more calculations. Step two is to size out over current protection fuse breaker. Step three is to size out the ampacity or what is the conductor size I need to carry my ampacity from point A to point B. And then step four I'm IDing the terminal temperature limits. We talked about that earlier. In general, so not in general, but if I have a terminal that is stamped for 75 degrees C, then I have to size my conductors in the 75 degrees C column on table 31015 B16. If there is no stamp, no identification for that terminal, then I have to treat it as a 60 degree C terminal. So I have to use ampacities out of the 60 degree column. And then note step five is verifying can that overcurrent protection device indeed protect that conductor. All right. So these are the circuits that I'm talking about. So in the top illustration, I have an array, and I have two, ser two series strings in that array. Off of that array, I have the single line, which indicates or represents one series string conductors. So I have a, that single line represents a positive and one negative conductor. So I have two current carrying conductors. Off the bottom array, uh, which is another string of six, I have another line that represents the conductors for that single, single series string, one positive and one negative. So when I get to this point here with the red circle, I have four current carrying conductors, two positives and two negatives that are going to run from the array all the way down to the inverter. No breakers, no fuses along the way because they're single strings of there's single conductors for a series string now those circuits that come from the array to the inverter uninterrupted are called PV source circuits the bottom illustration here I have the same two series strings here's the top one here's the bottom one Notice that the series strings represented by this line here, my positive and negative, go into a combiner box. 
When I take my series strings into a combiner box at the array, I'm combining circuits in parallel, goosing up the amperage, so there's uh, breakers involved in this. When I start paralleling circuits, I have to put in breakers and fuses at the combiner box, and then I'm coming off of that combiner box with something that's called a PV output circuit. This is one larger positive, one larger negative conductor going all the way down to the inverter. Prior to the combiner box, they are PV source circuits. After the combiner box, they are now PV output circuits. So be aware of the nomenclature used to identify these various circuits. All right, so sizing the conductor. Uh, we're going to size the conductor and overcurrent protection for the PV source circuit, and we would do the same exercise for the PV output circuit. All right, number one, step one, we're going to calculate for max current. As I said before, we're going to take the module data sheet, look at the electrical characteristics, and find short circuit current. And I'm going to take short circuit current times 1.25. This 1.25 represents over irradiance, so when uh, conditions where I would have more than 1,000 watts per meter squared. I would have those kinds of conditions if I have reflective snow, I have partly cloudy skies with this cloud edge effect. So what happens in this cloud edge effect is I have um, the edge of the cloud acts as a magnifying glass and it focuses or in, gathers up large areas of solar radiation and focuses it point focus into a an area, a smaller area, and so it bumps up the watts per meter squared, my solar fuel, bumps that up quite high for just an instant. So I have to build that into my my calculation here. So current max is short circuit current times 1.25. Step two, calculate continuous current. So I'm going to take I max times 1.25, another 1.25. And this, this second 125 represents the uh, bumping up the conductor size for continuous use or continuous duty. So if I have a circuit that's running electrons through it three hours or more, then I have to upsize the conductor to dissipate heat. So I have more surface area to dissipate the heat coming off of that conductor for that long period of time. And so do I have electrons running, running through my conductors more than three hours on my solar array? Yeah, absolutely. So step two, I'm calculating for continuous current. So I'm taking IMAX times an additional 1.25. I'm upsizing the conductor. All right. So this is also going to indicate my overcurrent protection device, OCPD. So IMAX times 1.25 gives me the number I need to size for my fuse or breaker in the system. Once I get that number, I'm going to go to the table 240.6A, which I supplied to you, and determine what kind of fuse I need or breaker for my, for my system. For the circuit. All right, step three. Now I'm going to size for the ampacity of the conductor. So the fuse size, the current for the fuse, I max times 1.25, only is for the overcurrent protection. And now I'm going to size the conductor to get as much current from point A to point B for various conditions. All right. And there's two calculations that I'm going to do. And this is laid out for you in National Electric Code's Article 690.8b. So in my first calculation, I'm going to use current continuous, so IMAX times 1.25, and that's going to be without conditions of use. So that's just a straight up number. Second calculation I have to do, method method 2, which is laid out in 690B2, I take IMAX and then I correct it 
for conditions of use. So I'm going to upsize it for ambient temperature and pipe fill and temperature, terminal temperature limitations. Step four, I go to I ID the temperature limits of the terminals. So I'm going to do all my D rates with 90 degree C insulation. We've talked about that before. But then when I select the final ampacity or the final conductor, I'm going to use the 75 C or the 60 degree C column. Uh, step five, I'm going to verify the overcurrent protection I, I selected for my conductor. Is it large enough to protect my conductor? Or should I say, will my conductor be adequately protected with the overcurrent protection? All right, here's an example of the process. So I have one series circuit, so I have one positive and one negative conductor, two current carrying conductors in a pipe. Short circuit current is 6.2 amps. My conductor I'm going to select is a copper 90 degree C conductor, so the insulation is rated for 90 degree C. Terminals I'm going to terminate on are 75 degree C, so the next column is smaller than that. And then ambient temperature is 120 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, step one. Determine maximum current in the short circuit, I max. 6.2 times 1.25 for irradi over irradiance, and I get 7.75. So this number, this I max, is the number I would put on my inverter, too, on that sticker. Step two, calculate for continuous current. So I take my I max, short circuit current, times 1.25, and then I multiply it by an additional 1.25, for continuous duty, and I get 9.69 amps. All right, so I write that down on a piece of paper, and I just leave that there. Now, in this step, I'm also sizing out overcurrent protection for a circuit. If this single circuit is running from the array to the inverter as one single unit, I don't need to fuse it. And I can find the reference for that in 690 dot 9a exception 1. Now if I parallel circuits together 2 into 1 or 3 into 1 or 4 into 1 I need to fuse each single each single series string so that if I have a malfunctioning string that the the large amount of current doesn't backfeed through that malfunctioning string or the string that is being shaded and feed a whole bunch of current through one single string. And what if that should happen, the components will heat up. There's a lot of resistance there. Components will heat up to the point well, where I start a fire on a module and then start the roof on fire. So anyway, this is one single string. I'm not going to fuse it, but if I would fuse it, I would select out a fuse from table, what is it, uh, 250, no, 240.6a. I uh, would take and go to that table, and I can't find a 9.69 amp fuse or breaker, but I, there is a 10 amp fuse. And so, uh, according to the code, if I'm operating less than 800 amps, I can round up to the next size of overcurrent protection. So I can go from 9.69 to 10. All right, step three. I have method one and method two. This I can find in 690.8b1 and 690.8b2. So I have to run both of these calculations and I'm going to take the largest of the two and base my current conductor on that current needed for scenario. All right, so method one, I still am dealing with this single PV source circuit. My short circuit current is still 6.2 amps. My insulation is still 90 degrees C, and my terminals are 75 degrees C, ambient temperature 120 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so method one, 
method one is short circuit current times 1.25 times 1.25, which equals current continuous. We've seen this before. So we just we see the formula, we just plug in our short circuit current and run the numbers, and we end up with 9.69 amps. All right, method two. I'm going to take I max, which is just short circuit current times the first 1.25. Then I'm going to take and bump that up, the need up, based upon the conditions of use. So I have conditions of use of two current carrying conductors in a pipe and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If you were paying attention to an earlier lecture, you would understand that my ampacity table in 310B, 31015B16, ampacity table is based upon 86 degrees Fahrenheit and three current carrying conductors in a pipe. In this scenario, I only have two current carrying conductors in a pipe, so I don't need to bump up my ampacity uh, abilities of my conductor because I don't have more than three current carrying conductors in the pipe. I have two. All right, going back to temperature. So, if you were, again, if you were listening in a previous lecture, you would know how to bump up the ampacity of carry X amount of current under conditions. But here's the review. So my temperature is 120 degrees Fahrenheit ambient. So I go to table 31015B2A, run my finger down the, uh, I'm sorry, run my finger down the ambient temperature column, the Fahrenheit column, find 120, slide it over to the 90 degree column, and I have 0.82. So I take I max of 7.75 and I divide it by 0.82 which gives me 9.45 amps. Now I, comp I compare method 1 to method 2. Method 1 in this case is larger so I would base my ampacity upon this 9.69 amps. This doesn't happen all the time. This is a um, pretty unique situation. Very few times have I seen method one be larger than method two. But here we are. All right, step four. I'm going to, or I'm still part B of step four. I'm working on step three right now, still. But now I'm going to find a conductor that can handle, what, 9.69 amps. All right? So I get to my ampacity tables at, at table 31015B16. On that is on page 150 of your code book. So if you remember, I base my temperature D rates on the insulation value that I have. And, and I said use a 90 degree C conductor because then you can do your D rates on that, lose a bunch of amps, but then when you find out the actual ampacity or the conductor that you need, you run down the 75 degree column and base your ampacities off of that column, not the 90 degree column. So I go to the 75 degree column, run my finger down, and I find a conductor that can carry 9.69 amps. Well, my first one is a 20 amp conductor, and I slide my finger over to the left two places, and it's a number 14. So, theoretically, I would need a number 14 conductor in order to carry this 20 amps from point A to point B. However, there's a place in the code book, and I think it is Article 240 and then something D. And that, in that article, it says that if I have a number 14 uh, wire, I have to fuse it for 15 amps. If I have a number 12 wire, I have to fuse it for 20 amps. If I have a number 10 wire, I have to fuse it for 30 amps. So I need to be able to carry 9.69 amps from point A to point B, array to the inverter. I ran through my conditions of use, I ran through calculations for current continuous, and I find that I need 9.69 amps. All right, so I go to my 75 degree column, and the, the first conductor that has an amp, ampacity rating is the number 14 as 20 amps. 
and I know in the back of my head that I, I can't run 20 amps on number 14. So that means I have to kick it up to a number 12 gauge. That's just the way it is. That's the rules. Don't argue with me. Just accept it and move on. So our final product is we're going to have a number 12 conductor from the array to the inverter. And to tell you the truth, that's just what you're going to you're going to have a spool of number 12 in the truck. You're going to have a spool of number 8 and a spool of number 10. More often than not, you're going to be running this this larger number 12 for a single string that has maybe six, nine, ten amps on it. It's oversized for the need, but that's what you have on your truck. That's what you use 99% of the time. And you don't need to be stocking 20 types of wire. You just stock three types of wire. All right. So, uh, oh, there's that. here's that article right here. Here's the article that says I need to fuse a number 12 at 20 amps. Article 240.4D. All right. Uh, next up, ID my temperature rating of the terminals, and they're 75 degrees C, and I use the 75 degree column to identify the ampacity of the conductor that I need. So we're clear on that. Step five, verifying the overcurrent protection. Will the overcurrent protection, should I put it into the circuit for this single string? I, I'm not required to, but should I do it, would that 20 amp, would that 10 amp breaker or fuse protect that 20 amp uh, conductor? And the answer is yes. The fuse would blow, the breaker would trip before the conductor would melt its insulation off because it's too hot from a short circuit. So we're all clear on that. We're all good. All right. And as simple as that. So don't get don't get bogged down into the details, just run through the steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. All right, we're going to do another example. Example two. Determine PV output circuit conductor size for three PV output circuits, which will have six current carrying conductors in a pipe. Each circuit will carry 40 amps. Uh, I'm going to use 90 degrees C conductor and parentheses THWN-2 parentheses. I'm going to terminate on 75 degrees C terminals. Ambient temperature is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. That's my conditions of this circuit. Circuits. All right, number one. So just to go back, I have three identical circuits. Whatever conductor I, I select out is going to be identical for the remaining two. Here we go. All right. So step two, uh, I'm sorry, example two, step one. Determine maximum current at the circuit. So at one of the circuits, I know that I have my short circuit current of 40 amps. I've combined that together. I'm on the downhill side of um, the combiner box. So I'm going from the combiner box to the inverter. And I'm doing that with three circuits. All right. Short circuit current of, of one of those PV output circuits is 40 amps. So I'm calculating for max current 40 amps times 1.25 for, for over irradiance. And I get 50 amps. Step two, continuous current. So now I'm going to take short circuit current, 40 amps, times 1.25 for over irradiance, times another 1.25 for continuous duty. So now I'm up to 62.5 amps. Now I'm going to base the um, over current protection on 62.5 amps. So looking at table 240.6a to the right here. I'm looking for a fuse that's rated for 62.5 amps and I'm seeing nothing. Well, but I know that the code says that I can round up. So I can go up to 
70 amps for my breaker or my fuse and be totally covered on the um, code. All right, next step, step three. Step three, I'm going to run through the two methods of sizing for the conductor ampacity. Method one, once again, is continuous current, which is short circuit current times 1.25 times 1.25. Method two is IMAX, short circuit current times 1.25, and then corrected for conditions of use. All right. Con method one, short circuit current times 1.25 times 1.25 equals 62.5. I write that on a piece of paper and move on to method two. Method two has a few more moving pieces, but we, we can handle this because we listened to the previous lecture. All right, uh, what we do is we find out I max, which is short, short circuit current times 1.25. 40 times 1.25 is 50 amps. Now I'm going to correct that for, for conditions of use. So I'm going to go to my temperature charts, table 31015B2A, and I'm going to run my finger down the ambient temperature Fahrenheit column finding 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And there it is between 105 and 113. Move my finger to the left one column, to the 90 degree column, and I get 0.87 for my correction factor. So I take 50 amps divided by 0.87 and I get 57.5 amps. So I've increased the need or I increased my conductor size based upon the temperature. Next up is pipe fill. So I have three sort uh, I have three circuits in that pipe and each one has a positive and negative so I have three positives, three negatives for a total of six current carrying conductors. So I go to my pipe fill chart table 31015 B3A find six current carrying conductors in the pipe, slide my finger over to the right, and my correction factor is 80%. Decimal equivalent of 80% is 0.8, so I'm going to take my 57.5 divided by 0.8, and I get 71 amps. So I need a conductor that can carry 71 amps. Next, I'm still on step three. I compare method one to method two. Method 2 is 71 amps, the largest. I go to table 31015B16, ampacity charts, and I run my finger down the 75 degree insulation column because that's what my terminals are rated for. And I find a conductor that can carry 71 amps. Well, here's one that's 85. Slide my finger to the right, two columns, and it's a number 4. So a number four copper would handle getting this 40 amps from the array or the combiner box to the inverter with little with no losses, little losses. All right. So the result is I pick out a number four copper conductor that'll handle 85 amps, which is more than adequate. And because I have I use the 75 degree column my terminals are covered also. My terminals are good. Step four, ID terminal temperature uh, limitations. We've already done that by sizing off the 75 degree column in table 31015B16. Step five, verify overcurrent protection. So I selected out a fuse size of 70 amps and I have a conductor number four that can carry 85 amps. So yes indeed that breaker would trip or the fuse would blow before my 85 amp conductor was damaged. We're all good. Example three. Here is an example of 24 SW290 modules in, on a, in an array. I have two series strings and my source circuit, PV source circuits are going to run through the same pipe from the transition box all the way down to the inverter. They're going to run down individual series strings. I'm not going to combine them together. 
So I have four current carrying conductors in a pipe. The short circuit current of a module is 9.97 amps. I'm going to use 90 degree C conductor and I'm going to terminate on 75 degree C terminals which means I have to use the 75 degree insulation column and in my ampacity tables. And I have an ambient temperature of 120 degrees. All right, step one, calculate for I max. I max is short circuit current times 1.25 for over irradiance, which means that I take 9.97 times 1.25 and I get a total of 12.5 amps. That is I max. Step two, I'm going to calculate for continuous current and uh, size of overcurrent protection should I need overcurrent protection. So I take 9.97 times 1.25 times 1.25 and I get 15.6. I look at my fuse chart, my breaker chart to the right, table 240.6a, and I see that there's not a 15.6 amp fuse or breaker, but I can upsize it to a number 20 amp breaker and I'd be totally fine. Step three. Now I'm going to use my calculations on method one, do my calculations for method two, and compare the two and take the largest of the two to base my ampacity uh, of the conductor that I need. Method one, we've done this before. I, current, uh, I continuous for method one is short circuit current times 1.25 times 1.25 or 9.97 times 1.25 times 1.25 equals 15.6. Write that on a piece of paper and we move to method two. Method two, which is I max or short circuit current times 1.25, corrected for conditions of use. So I do my 9.97 times 1.25 and I get 12.5 amps. Now I'm going to upsize that 12.5 amps based on the conditions of use. I have 120 degrees, so I go to table 31015B2A, run my finger down the ambient temperature column, find 120, slide over to the 90 degree C column, 0.82, and my, my, my correction factor is 0.82. So I take 12.5 amps divided by 0.82 and it bumps it up to 15.2 amps that I need. Ampacity or capacity that I need. Next, pipe fill. I have four current carrying conductors in a pipe. I go to table 31015B3A, find my four conductors, slide over to the right. 80% is my correction factor. Decimal equivalent of 80% is 0.8. So I take my 15.2 amps divided by 0.8 and I get 19 amps. Let's compare method one to method two. All right, so I need a conductor that can handle 19 amps. That's the largest of the two. So I'm basing my, my needs on 19 amps. I go to table 31015B16, run my finger down the 75 degree column again because I have 75 degree terminals and I look for a conductor that can handle 20 amps. Well here's that 14 again but because you were listening like five minutes ago you know that I can't put 20 amps on a number 14 conductor so I have to bump up to the number 12 conductor. It'll handle 25 amps or a good to go. Um, all right, so that's my conductor. Uh, we identified that we have 75 degree terminals, so I used the 75 degree column for my ampacity. And then step number five, should I choose to use overcurrent protection, my 20 amp overcurrent protective device will more than be adequate for my number 12, which can carry 25 amps safely. So I'm all good. I'm good to go. All right, so that was for PV source circuits and PV output circuits. We use the same steps for each of the of the conductors, the PV source circuits, and then 
we get it should we have output circuits running through combiner box I would do my calculation first for the um, PV output circuit then I would on the output side of the combiner box from the combiner box to the inverter I would do this operation once more for the sizing of the um, PV output circuit. Now if I don't have a combiner box I only do the operation once because it's one continuous conductor from the array to the inverter. Alright next up we're gonna size out the conductor size for the inverter output circuit. So this is on the output side or the AC side of an inverter and this is how you do it. I need to collect some information so I'm going to get the data sheet for the inverter and look for the AC continuous current output. Now I may have to do some critical thinking here and and uh, when I look at the nameplate or look at the data sheet I'm looking for a number that indicates what is the continuous current output of this inverter. They may name it something different but that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take the continuous current output of the inverter on the AC side and multiply it by 1.25 for continuous use. So this is this will be running for more than three hours so I have to upsize the conductor. And from that I'm going to base my ampacity and overcurrent protection upon that. And once again here's that 75 degree C term, uh, temperature that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the 75 degree C insulation temp for amp selecting out ampacities because I'm terminating on a 75 degree terminal. All right, here's a data sheet from a Sunny Boy 3000. You have that. Take a look at this. I'm sliding down AC output, AC output, nominal power, parent power, voltage, voltage, volt, frequency. Max output current. Here we go. This is the continuous maximum output current. 15 amps. All right. So now I'm going to go and do a little bit of math. So I have an SMA Sunny Boy 3000 TL, 240 volts AC. Maximum output current is 15 amps, 75 degree terminals. Because it's 240 amps, I have two hots and a neutral. And that means I have three current carrying conductors running in a pipe. I'm going to use conductors that have insulation values of 90 degrees C, ambient temperature 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Slightly more than, than what my baseline temperature is for table 31015B16, my ampacity charts, which is rated for 86 degrees Fahrenheit, right? Okay, so continuous output of this inverter is 15 amps. 15 times 1.25 is 18.75 amps. So I would take and base my overcurrent protection upon this 18.75 amps. So I go to table 240.6a and I won't see an 18.75 amp breaker or fuse so I, I know that I can upsize to 20. Alright, I'm good there. Now I'm going to take and do my conditions of use but only for temperature because I have three current carrying conductors in the pipe. My ampacity table is based upon three current carrying conductors in a pipe. Alright, so my temperature is what 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's my temperature table. 31015B2A. 15 Here's my ambient temperatures right here. I slide my finger down to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Slide over to the 90 degree column. My correction factor is 0.96. So I take my 18.75 amps current continuous divided by 0.96 and I get 19.59 amps, 95 amps, 19.5 amps. Next, uh, I go to table 31015B16, run my finger down the 75 degree column, and looking for a conductor that can carry 19.5 amps, and indeed I find a number 12 which can carry 25 amps in the 75 degree column. I run my finger down 
and a number 12 can carry 25 amps. This conductor is going to be uh, protected by a 20 amp breaker. So the breaker will trip before my conductor melts. So we're all good. Everything's good. Another example. Now I'm going to use a 7,000 watt uh, Sunny Boy inverter. Run my finger down, looking for continuous max output current. Here it is right here. And this time it's not 15 amps, it's 29.2 amps. I still have, what, three current carrying conductors in a pipe. I still have 75 degree terminals. I'm going to still use a 90 degree C insulation for my conductor. Ambient temperature is still 88 degrees Fahrenheit. I just choose the, chose that number at, at random. Okay, first I, I determine what is my continuous current output. So I take my output of the inverter times 1.25. So 29.2 times 1.25 equals 36.5 amps continuous current. So I'm going to base my overcurrent protection upon that 36.5 amps. And if I go to table 240.6a, I'll see that I can use a um, 40 amp breaker on this and be good. So now I'm going to size for my ampacity for my conductor. So I go to table 31015B2A, my temperature correction chart, and I'm running through what 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So I run down with my finger down the right hand side looking for 88. Got it. Slide it over to the left to the 90 degree insulation column, 0.96. So now I'm going to take my 36.5 amps continuous current. Divided by 0.96, and now I got 38 amps needed uh, of ampacity for a conductor. So I'm going to go to table now. I go to table 31015B16 ampacity charts. Run my finger down the 75 degree C column and find a conductor that can handle at least 38 amps. So I run my finger down in the 75 degree column and I find a number eight which can carry 50 amps. My overcurrent protection is 40 amps, and that's more than adequate to pr protect that larger conductor. And that's how you do it. Here's my 75 degree column. Run my finger down it, looking for something that can handle 38 amps. The number 10 cannot, but the number 8 can. That's how I determine this, my conductor size. Here's my overcurrent protection size. I can't get a 36.5 amp breaker, but I can get a 40. And code allows us to upsize uh, to the next largest breaker or fuse. All right.